Welcome to Biochemistry Online from Stony Brook University. I'm hoping that as the course progresses over the next eight weeks, I'll get to know many of you well through the brainstorming sessions that we'll be doing on some complex questions in biochemistry through our discussion boards. I'm sure we'll get to know each other very well by the end of this eight weeks. So this course is mostly administered through the Blackboard course. So once you log on to the course on Blackboard, you'll see the left menu, which will have most of the information that you need to know. You should be careful to read the announcements that are up on Blackboard. Uh, you will get emails uh, uh, telling you about these announcements, but make sure that your email address is uh, the stonybrook.edu email address because that's where anything from Blackboard will be sent to. So if you have a different email address, be sure that the Stony Brook email address is either checked often or that you forward everything to it. If you go to faculty information on the left-hand side, you will see that the course director for this particular course is Dr. Sanford, Sanford Simon. You can see the information about him and his research. You'll also see that the course faculty administrator is myself, Joanne Souza. I will administer the Blackboard course and anything that has to do with the e-quizzes or the discussion boards. If you scroll further down, you'll see other faculty that have made lecture videos for their portions of the course. And if you continue down, you will see the teaching assistants that have been assigned to this course. Maxwell Moore is the graduate teaching assistant and the other four teaching assistants are undergraduates. They'll be helping you within the discussion board environment to critically think and to mentor you to be able to solve more complex questions. They'll also help you in the content administration forum where you can ask all kinds of questions if you become confused on any part of the course content. Next, if you go to textbook information, you'll see the textbook that you need for this course. Next, you'll go to course information and syllabus. If we open the syllabus, you will, I want to call your attention to what's in red on the very first page, which at this course is an asynchronous online course. What that means is that you will log on to the course periodically throughout the week and there are uh, assignments twice a week that you'll have to submit, but when it comes to watching the video lectures, you can watch them anytime within the week you choose as long as you submit your assignments on time. There are also three live proctored exams in this course that will take in either on West Campus in our Javits Lecture Hall, or if you're not close to Stony Brook University and you wish to take your exams at approved remote test center sites, then you would contact me by the end of the week and we'll find a testing site that is close to where you are and that is approved by Stony Brook University. Next on the syllabus, be sure you look at the course technical requirements so that your computer is up to date so that you can run the videos without a problem and that you could um, participate in the e-quizzes and the discussion boards with no problems. Next, I'll go over the grading. There are approximately 73 quizzes, which are 390 questions total during the course of this term, and eight extensive and comprehensive discussion board postings that are part of what we call learning assets in this class. This will help you focus on the course content, help you pace yourself throughout the course because it's a very fast moving and comprehensive course. There's also a quiz zero, which is about the exam location, and that will give you four bonus quiz points on top of the 390 points that you can get here for the quizzes. The quizzes and the discussions are a total of 25% of your final grade. Exam one is another 25% to another 25%, and exam three a third 25%, totaling 100%. Exam three is not cumulative, it will cover the last third of the course. If you go to the last page on the syllabus, you'll be able to see a course schedule so you can pace yourself throughout the next eight weeks. 
you know what's coming up, you know how much time you would need to allot to this course. Again, this is what's considered at Stony Brook a red course, which means there's a tremendous amount of work involved in order for you to master the content. Now each week, after you've gotten ready for the course, you have your uh, textbook, you understand how the course is run, you've read the syllabus, you've taken the quiz, the very first quiz, which is about exam locations, then you will go each week to the weekly assignments tab. You will see a folder at the top, which will be the folder of uh, everything that's due for that particular week. If you open it, at the very top, you will see assignments. That assignment should be open first before you do anything else, because if you open it, it will detail for you everything you need to do for the entire week, including the graded assignments that are due. As you can see, the two two due dates are Thursdays and Sundays in this course on most weeks. For every module you will have to complete a quiz and then at the end of the week there is one discussion post that's due but that's the ending of the entire discussion. These discussions are what we call brainstorming sessions where you'll be talking about some more complex questions that are going to be indicative of what will be on the second and third exams, that level of complexity. So we, we're looking for you not just to make one discussion post and get in and out, we're looking for you to brainstorm with your colleagues over the course of the week. And the due date for the closing of that discussion is on Sunday. For the first week, you will see a folder called Lecture Zero. If you open it, you'll see the, an orient, this orientation video and an academic integrity video. You will also see a, a quiz zero that you should make sure that you take before Thursday. Next, if you look down the rest of the first week, you will see folders for every lecture that is due for the week. If you open the first one, you'll see the reading, the very first reading. You'll see the first sequence. And you'll see the first lecture video that's due. It's called Segment 1A and Segment 1B. If you open each of the folders, you will see a PowerPoint so that you can take notes on that particular video lecture. You will see the video itself, and then you will see a quiz that immediately follows the video. In order to see the video, you would either click on the, the video link itself, but if it doesn't work, if you get an echo uh, type of uh, login, what you should do is go to the echo center here as shown on the left. And if you scroll down, you will be able to see lecture 1A and all the rest of the lectures for the entire semester. You'll press play, you'll acknowledge the copyright, and then you'll be able to see the lecture video as soon as you press play. After the, you are done with the video, the next thing you should do is to take the quiz that goes with that video. Now these particular quizzes are set up in a way according to what we call Bloom's Taxonomy. In other words, there's different levels of learning that students have and there are different levels of learning that the quiz questions will be addressing. So in the beginning you'll be learning some definitional terms, you'll recall some facts, you'll be asked to explain ideas and concepts to show that you're starting to understand some of these definitional terms. You'll learn to apply it to some problems to execute this and, and um, solve a less complex problem. Then later on, we're going to ask you to analyze multiple concepts and synthesize them together so that you can solve a more complex question. The e-quizzes are designed to bring you up this level so you will see different levels of question on this quiz. So you can start to learn how to not only understand the concepts but then apply, apply them to analyzation of more complex questions. When you open the quiz, you'll see a warning. You'll press begin, but make sure that you have enough time to take the quiz because you can only take it once. Once you enter it, you must finish it. If you click out of the quiz for any reason whatsoever, you will not be able to get back into it. 
So make sure you leave enough time that you have to complete the quiz. You'll go through, you'll answer the questions, you'll press save and submit. And next you'll see a screen that looks like this. You will press OK on the bottom right. And you will see another screen that says that you completed the quiz. If you don't get to this screen, that means that the quiz most likely did not go through. If that's the case, you should email me right away. And we recommend that you don't take these quizzes at the last minute before the deadline of either Wednesday or Thursday. Because if you do, and you get close to the deadline and you have technology problems, there isn't enough time for you to contact me and for me to go in and reset the quiz for you. We do not reset any quizzes after the due date. So we suggest that you take these quizzes ahead of time before the due date is imminent. You'll also notice that the attempted score will say zero out of zero points. Don't be concerned. That doesn't mean you received a zero on the quiz. We do later as we grade the quizzes after the due dates are over. We will then send you an announcement and an email telling you that the quizzes have been graded and that you can re-enter them to see what the correct answers were, what the answer is that you chose, and you'll see your total grade. So don't be concerned about the zero when you first see it. Next, when it's time to start beginning your discussion posts, and I would look at the questions for the discussion posts early in the week so that you can decide which question you would like to start to brainstorm with some of your colleagues about. In order to enter that discussion board, what you'll do is you'll see something like this on the bottom. It says group one or group two or group three or group four, whichever group you happen to be in. You'll click on the group, th the home page, and you'll be taken to something that looks like this. This is the discussion board course for your group. You can also get to this separate discussion board group by going to the main menu on Blackboard. You don't necessarily need to go through the main course, but if you wish to, you can. When you log on to this course, you will see a welcome, and you'll also see who your undergraduate teaching assistant is that will be there to help you, men mentor you to critically think, and to brainstorm together to attempt to solve the more complex questions. Any grading issues that you have with discussion postings, you should address to me. If you click on the Group 1 Discussions, you'll see two forums. The first one is for your introductory post. The one that's at the top will always be the one that's due next. So your first uh, discussion post is simply an introduction post. If you follow the directions here, you'll be able to make that post on time. If you click on it, you'll see two introductions, one from your graduate teaching assistant and one from your undergraduate teaching assistant. When you go to add your introduction, you'll click Create Thread. And in the subject line, you'll put introduction, you'll put your name, and you will type your introduction in the box. We do not accept attachments to discussion board postings as the posting. You must put it in the box and then you will press Submit. Do not press Save Draft because if you do that, no one will see the discussion post but you and it will be not considered submitted by the due date. You must press Submit so that it goes through. A good practice to get into is to log off, log back on, and look for your post and make sure that it posted correctly. Your second discussion post for the first week will be the second one down. If you open it, you will see approximately five questions. Every week you'll see approximately five or six questions. You only need to brainstorm with your colleagues about one. So you would choose any one of the five questions that you wish to focus your time on for the week. These are all what we call exam two, and, I'm sorry, exam five and six. Uh, level questions. These are the type of questions that you're going to start to see as the course progresses on exam two and exam three. 
We don't want you to be surprised by the complexity and the difficulty of the questions. We want to help you to be able to solve this type of question no matter what the content area. So these discussion questions are based on strategies. How would you look at a question like this? How would you break it down into its smaller parts? What concepts do you need to know in order to answer these questions? What details could you predict? What are some of the exceptions to the rule? These are the type of things that you'll be talking about in your discussion postings. There's also a second discussion board in the main Blackboard course. If you look at it, it is for content questions. You can find them here in the main course. It's administrative and content questions. For the administrative questions, you would ask, you can ask anything about the administration of the course. If it's a content question, that's not anything about the discussion board questions. You can post it here. If you become confused about something, you can post a content question here, and both Professor Simon and any one of your teaching assistants will be glad to help you. Many times, if you're confused in a certain area, certain other students will be too. So it's better to have it in a forum like this so that everyone can see the response of the faculty instead of just one student. But this discussion board is on your main Blackboard course for Bio 361, and it is not in the separate discussion board brainstorming Blackboard courses. We want to wish you good luck. This course moves extremely fast, so please don't fall behind. Remember that our deadlines are fast and hard. The class is only eight weeks long. We cannot hold up the class for one student who happened to be late for a quiz or a discussion post. We have to keep moving ahead, turn the grades on, and make the clarifications of any discussion postings for you so that you're prepared for your exams. So please don't ask us to hold the class up and make sure you stay on time and that you submit everything you're supposed to submit by the due dates each week. Reach out for help anytime you need it. There are faculty and five teaching assistants that can help you. And make sure that you are scheduled for your live exams. Good luck and we'll see you soon.